Greetings pen pals. Today we have the Rote Ring Core. Now this is one of these pens that um, you kind of wonder if the folks who designed it weren't joking or kidding in some sense because this is just a wacky, wacky pen in almost every respect. Um, so first of all, let's get a little bit of a size on it. So here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see lengthwise, it's fairly conventional. Uh, the body is a little bit girthy and the cap is just insanely girthy. Um, so it's just got this incredibly beefy cap. When you think of rote ring and fountain pens, you probably think of something like this. This is a rote ring model 600. This is a fairly uh, popular fountain pen back in the day. So oh, another thing, both this pen, the core and the 600 are no longer manufactured by rote ring. So you have to get them on the uh, secondary uh, uh, market. Um, uh, it, it's mostly a plastic pen. It's got a little bit of metal in it, weighs in at 30 grams. Um, let's just get right to it. So the cap is a rubberized type plastic with a lot of grippiness, um, both uh, on, it's got these ridges here, very heavy ridges here. Um, it's um, got this very, very substantial uh, wire style clip, kind of a little bit uh, Lamy Safari like. Got some just odd branding here. I think this is a C for core, I, L, S, and M, and then some sort of a rote ring type logo there. It does have the formal rote ring logo embossed in the uh, plastic here. It says core on the side here. It just has some just more interesting little artwork here it says LSM forced force resource I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean it says turn this way right on system um, now what's interesting it says turn this way but this is not a screw to uncap pen it's a uh, pull to uncap uh, pen. Like all rote ring pens, it does have a red ring. So here's the rote ring model 600. It has a red ring somewhere here as well. Red, rote ring is simply the German for red ring. So that's their, their trademark. It has this um, window here, open window of kind of vents that would, if you were using a, a regular cartridge, um, uh, you would actually probably be able to see the ink level in here. Not the biggest fan of cartridges, as you probably know from this channel. So I was able to uh, find this um, Chinese squeeze converter that I had laying around that actually fit. A lot of standard international converters would fit someone, so etc. So you have to you have to play around with um, uh, finding a converter that would fit. So I was able to find one. Um, so the turn this way, I guess, refers to unscrewing the barrel, but um, the barrel just screws in and out as as normal. It does post, it posts with a very definitive click, which I kind of like, which is nice. Now we get to this just crazy, crazy section with this gigantic indentation in here and then a grip here. So this is gonna enforce sort of like a tripod style grip, but it's just, it's, and it's just a wacky, wacky section. It doesn't feel uncomfortable in the hand by any means, but it's just really pretty crazy. Um, it's got, this sort of secondary ridge here. If you're one of these people that likes to keep their fingers far away from their nib when they're writing, this is definitely the section for you. Your finger feels like it's a mile away from the nib when you're when you're writing with this. Speaking of the nib, it's a steel nib. This is what they branded an XL nib. So it's got some golf ball style divots on the nib. It says uh, Germany on one side, it says rote ring on the other, and it has the XL on it. Nicely, nice looking nib, I have to say, and a very, very beefy, beefy uh, plastic um, uh, feed. Um, that is, uh, you know, this is one of these pens. Either you're gonna love it, you're gonna hate it, or you're just gonna be like more like me, which is sort of scratching your head uh, about this. I'm not kind of sure. It's unclear to me exactly what they were going for. They're sort of like a nouveau industrial sci-fi look, I guess you could call it with this thing. I'm not even really sure what exactly you would call this style, but it is what it is. It's its its, it's own thing. So this is the Rote Ring Core, and this is uh, 
uh, what it uh, what it what it uh, what it looks like. Um, and like I said, it's not a bad pen. It feels very well made. I, mean, I would say the build quality on this is is quite quite good. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about the end. So the the distal end of the pen is uh, basically has a gray plastic knob with a very big notch here. This is where the the click would uh, would go when uh, cap it when you uh, post it. I'm sorry. Uh, it does have a fairly significant uh, liner inside the cap, and the um, uh, end of the cap terminates in this uh, very industrial looking, um, uh, looks like something that would accommodate an Allen uh, key if you wanted to, uh, hex, hex wrench if you wanted to, uh, to uh, take that off. So that is the road ring core and pretty much the what the parts of this pen look like um, of course as we always say pens were meant to write and this one is no exception I'm gonna show you how it writes right now okay what we're writing with you today is a rote ring core and this has a steel nib in XL as they call it. I guess that's extra large or extra broad or what have you. I mean, it's, it's a fairly broad. I would call it a, a nice solid broad. Um, but it's, uh, writes, it writes well. It's, I'd say, above average wetness. It is quite smooth um, and uh, very comfortable. And I do like writing with it. If you like this kind of section, which might take a little bit of getting used to for a lot of people. But it is a pleasant writing pen on all. Speaking of pleasant, it would be very pleasant if you folks at all please like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you would do those things, they would be very much appreciated by yours truly well that's all i pretty much have to say about this rote ring core bit of a wacky pen um like i said i i, I guess i like it I, I mean you know it's one of these things i i i it's just i it, this is a this pen is a head scratcher to me i i would say as i'm sitting here today reviewing this i would say i kind of like it um but uh, i would fully uh, be the first one to admit that this is clearly not to everybody's taste. At any rate, that's all for this pen. Let's take a uh, talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? Okay, this is a very, very light colored ink. Might be too light for some people, as, and you do need a fairly broad pen for a light ink like this, so it does work kind of with this pen. So this is from J. Herban Diablo Mint. And um, this is uh, a standard color from in J. Herban's uh, product line. Nothing, um, nothing uh, special about it. Not a special edition or anything like that. It's a basically, it's basically a light aqua blue blue green more blue than green. Um, and uh, it's a it's a pretty ink. It's a nice ink. Um, here's what the color card for it looks like. Um, and here's it compared to Colorverse Photon, which is a similar color but a bit greener. All right, that is J Herban Diablo Mint. That's what it looks like on this rodeo paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper, shall we? All right, like we said, this is J. Herban. Or really, should we say Herban? They're not actually branding themselves J. Herban anymore. They're just using Herban on newer bottles for the last few years anyway. They're just saying Herban, not J. Herban. Uh, Diablo. Mint. And it's a, it's a pretty nice color. Nothing crazy with special effects, etc. It's just a fairly light color. So again, you need a fairly broad pen and obviously not for every use. 
That, I think, will just about do it for this video today. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching it, because I sure enjoyed making it. And until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.